What'd you have for lunch today? <laughs> Lettuce wrap burger. Hey, what'd you have for lunch today? <laughs> Lettuce wrap Angus burger. Hey, what'd you have for lunch today? <laughs> Lettuce wrap top sirloin burger. You get my point. It's so easy to default to a just regular burger as a lettuce wrap when you're on keto for lunch. Just like my video where I broke down bacon and egg alternatives, let's find ourselves a little bit of a different taste when it comes down to lunch. All right, so I've got a few things here. I'm gonna start right out the gate. It's kind of a forgotten one. I recently rediscovered egg salad. I know it may gross you out and sometimes you have some weird cafeteria memories, <laughs> but there's some things you have to remember when you have eggs for lunch. If you're gonna mix them up with mayonnaise like you're supposed to, you wanna make sure that you are not using traditional soy-filled mayonnaise. So when you're shopping for a mayonnaise, do not get it with canola oil, do not get it with sunflower oil, and especially do not get it with soybean oil. So try to go for one that's like avocado oil or olive oil. Sometimes they have them with a kind of a mix of them. Point is, the fats that you're getting from the eggs are already good. Go for the pasture-raised eggs. Don't go for free range. You want pasture-raised if you're gonna go the egg salad route. It is a very fat-focused meal, so feel free to do what I do, which is actually add some additional white into it in this particular case. Now, there are some beliefs that the egg white, since it's pure albumin, could trigger an inflammatory response. In the morning, that is something I pay attention to. In the afternoon, not as much. The point is, a couple of eggs plus some additional white, and you're usually getting enough protein. But the other thing that you can do, feel free to add a little bit of chunks of protein, some chunks of chicken or something in there just to give it a little bit more life. Anyhow, I just rediscovered it, completely forgot about it, and it's a perfect calorically dense keto meal. Now let's move in to the next one. Don't forget about a good old fashioned Cobb salad. Now this is kind of a pathetic, puny looking Cobb salad, but the fact of the matter is I gotta make it all fit on frame. Okay, the problem with getting a Cobb salad is this. You go to the Cobb, <laughs> go to the Cobb salad store. You go to the Cobb, I'm gonna leave that in. The problem with Cobb salad is you go to the Cobb salad store, just kidding. You go to the restaurant and you order a Cobb salad and they put like seven tablespoons of dressing on it. And what does the dressing have in it? Once again, a bunch of soybean oil or a best case scenario, it's gonna have good old fashioned canola oil. Okay, a Cobb salad ideally has a perfect mix of what we need. We have some chicken, we have our egg, we have our mixed greens, which if you're making it at home, please try to go for something like arugula, something like that that has a little bit more volume and a little bit more substance to it rather than just regular iceberg or romaine. Okay, then I'm usually gonna put about a quarter to a half of an avocado. Then the big secret star here is, if you're making it at home, use goat cheese. Okay, blue cheese is fine, but goat cheese is highly ketogenic. It contains MCT oil in it. Yes, literally goat cheese has MCTs in it, which drive more ketone production. So that means you can have your lunch and actually get some energy after lunch versus the opposite when you usually fall flat on your face. And what do you do for dressing? Well, usually I make my Cobb salad a little bit different. Rather than using ranch, I usually use like a little spritz of avocado oil spray, something like that. And then a lot of times what I'll do is even add apple cider vinegar or balsamic vinegar. You can also use like some ranch that has avocado oil, like Primal Kitchen has a really good ranch that is made with avocado oil as well, so you don't have the soybean oil. Talk more about that in just a second. Highly recommend that stuff. Okay, so we've got egg salad, we've got a Cobb salad that you're making under control, not just going to, I don't know, Cheesecake Factory and having them give you a gallon of regular dressing. Okay, this next one is pretty cool. This is a fun little uh, twist on a sandwich here. Again, we think lettuce wrap burger, what about making some kind of deli sandwich? So what I have here is I have two tablespoons of pesto that is with, made with olive oil, okay? Then I'm going to take some of the ranch. I'm making myself a pesto ranch that is super good. And again, I'm using this primal kitchen one that is made with olive oil, so, or excuse me, avocado oil. So I'm just gonna eyeball it, probably go about two or three tablespoons there, make myself a little dressing. By the way, I got this through Thrive Market. Uh, there's a link down below so you can try it. So Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store. So if you use the link down below to try Thrive Market, if you use Primal Kitchen as your free gift, so when you go there, you're gonna get a free gift because you're using it through my channel, uh, select Primal Kitchen as your free gift and you're gonna save 25% off your membership. So go ahead and give that a shot. Use the link down below and check Primal Kitchen as your free gift down below. All right, so here's what I've got. Okay, so now I've got ranch. I've got pesto ranch that I made myself, and I am not a cook. If you've seen me make pizza, you know that I ruin it every time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slather this onto one side. 
I'm using romaine here. Ideally, I'd like to use like butter lettuce because it's just better. <laughs> it's easier to mix up. Uh, put a little bit more on the other side. And now, the interesting star of the show, this next piece I got at Trader Joe's, but you can find it a lot of places now. This is sliced goat cheese. If you cannot get your hands on sliced goat cheese, the next best bet is going to be sliced Gouda, okay, because Gouda is rich in vitamin K2, which is very, very important on keto, okay? And the next best bet after that, I would go with either like a Munster or even like a Gruyere or a Swiss because it's going to be a high altitude cheese, which is higher in conjugated linoleic acid, very good for fat burning as well. Okay, then I do something different. Okay, I have chicken breast here. You could just load up with the chicken breast, but I have a trick. I have found to give it a nice Mediterranean feel. I still like my deli meat, but a lot of deli meat is not exactly what we want to have on keto because it's just processed and not good. But Parma ham or prosciutto is very clean to have on keto. It's usually just ham and salt, that's it. And it gets a bad rap because it's high in sodium. But on keto, you actually need the extra salt because you are losing electrolytes through your urine because your insulin levels are a little bit lower. So you can eat straight up habit like this and have a prosciutto sandwich, or you can do what I do, where I take some thinly sliced chicken breast and I actually roll it up within the sandwich itself, which just gives it a whole different level. Go like that. And then of course, it wouldn't be a sandwich, a keto sandwich without a little bit of avocado. We already have the avocado oil. So we have a huge, huge surplus of what is called oleolethanolamine, O-E-A, which comes as a result of the oleic acid. I'm gonna have a bite of this real quick. Come on, go. No. Mm. That prosciutto wrapped chicken does everything. So anyway, that's a fun little twist there. But I've got one more that I wanna share with you. This is an elevated version of a caprese salad, okay? Look at all these ingredients. This is something you probably wouldn't make on the go. If you're on the go, you're probably just gonna settle for the lettuce wrap burger or a Cobb salad from, I don't know, somewhere. Show you what I got here. I've got buffalo mozzarella. If you're gonna use fresh mozzarella, try to get buffalo, but if you can't, it's not the end of the world. Mozzarella is just not an aged cheese, so you wanna go for the cleanest sourcing that you possibly can. Otherwise, I go for an aged cheese, like a Parmesan or a Pecorino Romano or uh, even a Manchego or something like that. Okay, then I put avocado into my caprese's. Of course, I have basil, which gives me a bunch of flavonoids and antioxidant properties. I've got the tomatoes getting me that lycopene. Okay, then I elevate my caprese by putting some olives because the actual olive form, rather than having olive oil, the actual olives themselves are much richer in hydroxytyrosol, which is a potent antioxidant. But the antioxidant power doesn't stop there. I got one other thing after I add this chicken, because we're having a chicken caprese salad, so we get the protein too. We don't want to skimp on that. Capers. You can skip these if you want, but I will tell you, when it comes down to leveling up your ketogenic diet, you want to have some capers because they are the most potent form of quercetin on the planet. Quercetin has unique powers at triggering what is called PPAR activation. If you are doing keto and you wanna get deeper into keto or you wanna adopt some additional benefits from keto, you need to get fat adapted. Maybe you've heard that term before. Well, fat adaptation comes from a specific receptor protein called PPAR alpha that goes to the nucleus of a cell and allows the cell to be capable of utilizing fats for fuel better. Mix that up. And then what you could do is if you wanted to add some more fats to it, just spray a little bit of avocado oil. I know people will drench their caprese's in olive oil, but you end up leaving so much of the bottom pulled up, it's just not worth it. So, okay, let me try to get a bite with all of this. A little tomato, a little chicken, a little caper, a little basil, a little cheese. That tastes like Chefalu right in my mouth. I uh, went to school in Italy for quite a while. Lived there for a little bit when I was a kid. Spent a lot of time in Sicily. And, yeah, okay, I'm gonna eat that after the video. And last but not least, don't forget tuna salad, right? So simple, but we have to follow the same rules. Using an avocado mayo, not using soy, not using canola. Try, if you're gonna have this frequently, try to use either skipjack or chunk light tuna and then give it a bath. Like drain it, rinse it, get a lot of the extra salt off. Um, 
There are a couple companies that I think are really good. Costco has this uh, Safe Catch brand, which actually tests for mercury, which I think is really cool. This is not a plug, not an ad for them. Uh, point is, is that it really does help a lot to get one that is not albacore because albacore is going to be a lot higher in mercury. So then, you know, a little bit of cilantro, a little bit of parsley, a little bit of green onion, and some good old fashioned mayo, and then put it on top of a salad, whatever you want to do. I just don't want you to forget about it because again, we get so wrapped up in, I guess I'll just have a burger, like every kind of burger with different kind of cheese. Sunday, it's burger with Munster. Wednesday, it's burger with Swiss. It's just always a burger, a burger, a burger. Let's do something different. So once again, a huge thank you to Thrive Market for the support as well as Primal Kitchen. Don't forget to check them out down below in the description and let me know in the comment section below what you think of these dishes after you try them, especially the sandwich and this overall awesome caprese. I will see you tomorrow.